Yeah, go for it. But I think uh, I, I'm working with some people. So if we can put a digital beard, yeah, I like that. That would work. Yeah, yeah, I like the digital beard. I mean, at least I can have a pretend beard, you know, and, and have some swag on me, you know. And hopefully you can, you can help me have some pretend uh, crypto trading skills. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think most people in this market have that. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's got it for a few days until they get wrecked. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Everybody's got great trading skills until they realize they're making no money. So Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it's interesting. I feel like a lot of people think that like equities trading is maybe like something so foreign. You know what I'm saying? Like there there are people right. who got into crypto trading and never did any equities trading. Right. Well, interestingly enough, I think crypto trading is the best place to cut your teeth. Equities trading, well, there's a lot more sharks in that market in that area so you know if you think about the brokers etc and also I, I do think crypto is going to head more and more that way i mean it already is there's already you no know, brokerage initiatives going on etc um to make it easier for traders but the cost is now you have a broker etc so I, I do think it'll go that way but right now it's still the wild west like there's tons of opportunity for people who want to learn trading so for everybody's uh edification this is sean he's I mean, are you the crypto wizard or are you a part of crypto wizard? <laughs> I'm a part of crypto wizards. So crypto wizards was a, a name given because of the only really great book on trading in my experience, which is market wizards. It's, a, it's an interview of actual traders who made money in the markets. Therefore, it was kind of useful. And I thought we need that, but we need it for crypto. So we came up with crypto wizards, but no one clocked that. So everyone gets confused with the name but it's just kind of stuck you know nice so so you, so you adopted this mentality from market wizards and brought it to crypto wizards right exactly it, it, the whole theme has always been do what works like no bullshit trading just do what works you know do what is proven to work rather Take than speculating emotion. yeah make a plan i mean yeah. that's not how it always works out so on this episode i really want to talk about you know basic the basics from like from your point of view um i want to learn more about crypto wizards algorithmic trading because mm -hmm. one thing for sure is that if there's ever been a place where it makes sense for you to do algorithmic trading it's in a 24 7 market right where that's that's really the benefit you get outside of the fact that you can't even like identify half of those patterns yourself right yeah i've i've become fascinated with algorithmic trading only because it feels like a holy grail for trading. But in terms of being profitable, you know, that's when I just go back to basics. So if I want to trade and I do want to be profitable, I go back to basic strategies that I just know will work where I'm not actually speculating. But yes, there are machine learning algorithms uh, that can outperform humans in trading, but they're not what people think they are. So, uh, and they don't work yeah, the way that most that. people what, are teaching. What, what, what do people think they are? That they're, they're like this mystical like engine that's just going to make you money? Is that what the right. conception is? Yeah, I, I think people need to remember that trading is a zero-sum game. You know, one of the things I loved uh, doing the interview with Crix is Dim Dimitri made this very, very clear, who's one of the founders of this exchange, Crix, as you well know. And, you know, he, he reminded everyone, he's like, look, trading is a zero sum game. If somebody's gaining, someone else has lost that. Like it's zero sum. So if you have a bot, which is trading for everyone, the same thing, like do the maths. It's not going right. to work. It's not going to do anything. You need to have, you need to have your own bot at the end of the day. Right. Um, and, you know, as I've discussed with people, cause I don't know how to build a bot, you know, that's something I definitely want to learn, especially, uh, with all the tools that are out there right now. Yeah. But um, if you, you just have, as long as you have an idea, right? Which is like my idea this week, for example, is that BTC is gonna go sideways, let's say for the next week. Right. So that's your idea. And then you get a bot to, to, to run off of that idea versus, hey, just give me a bot. That's always gonna make money. Cause that's, there's no such thing, as you said, if everybody used that bot, zero sum game, no one's gonna make money. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you think of institutions, one of the key, the, one of the key aspects they target is exactly what you said. You, you're either in an established uptrend, an established downtrend, or in a ranging market. If you if you know what market you're in and going to be in, or you can predict that with any level of accuracy, the actual trading part becomes unbelievably basic. 
Right. But it's, it's actually identifying the market, which is tough. Yeah. So I want to start trading today, right? Like I become, I'm, a, I'm a new trader to the, to the world. How, how do I start? Where would crypto wizards come in? Like what, what are those tools you think I need to get acquainted with? Yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting. So crypto wizards has always been about just bring, bring what works to the market. When we first started the tool, it was a free tool. We had about two and a half thousand people using the tool with no, no promotion whatsoever, which was kind of interesting. But, you know, it was developed by a single father who is myself, you know, at home because you can do that in crypto. So what did we develop? We just developed an arbitrage tool to begin with. So for me, I just wanted to know, okay, what's going to work in this market? You've got these assets, these crypto prices all over the freaking place. Everyone is, you know, like shit scared to sign up to certain exchanges and whatever. So if you've got the kahunas to be like, well, I don't care. I'm just going to ship the money around. Show me where the money is. You, you know, you could go on and make money. So what was interesting is if you remember back in December 2017, when <laughs> all that it's much more was going to hit a million. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everyone was trading that. Um, and I, I got into crypto fairly late. I only came in in around October because my friend John, he said to me, you're going to love this shit. He's like, crypto is the Wild West. And the first thing, I didn't understand what it was. And I remember him saying, like, there's these, these cryptos everywhere. I said, what do you mean? Like stocks? He was like, yeah, it's similar to the stock market, except very few people know how to get in and manage the crypto. So automatically, I'll, the first word that came to mind, there were two things. Number one, can I buy options like Bitcoin options? And then number two was, where's the arbitrage? Is anyone arbitraging this? So while everyone was like going long and holding coin, I was building arbitrage tools because I knew no one was looking at the arbitrage. Right. And what happened is the market tanked and everyone was now on the drug. So everyone was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone was like, where can I get another hit of this shit? The next fix. Yeah. Um, yeah. I loved making money. I thought I was going to retire. I need some more. So everyone got into arbitrage at that point, And that's when the arbitrage opportunities took decline because it's a zero sum game. So to a new trader, I would, I would say arbitrage. I would say, you know, there are avenues of arbitrage. What we do with crypto wizards is we have no signals for arbitrage. So I will not send the traders an alert to say, here's an opportunity of 14% right now with, you know, a thousand US dollars worth of depth. So you can make $140 or whatever, right? Yeah. I will not send that signal. Like it's on the platform. So you have to show up and you have to run it for the right exchanges. So people can go on and pick whatever exchanges they want, run it, and then they can catch the opportunity. And that's the only way I could make it fair for all. Um, right. Because if you, people if that you turn up, make everybody, money. it's just going to be whoever can execute faster. So right. this, this requires some work. If you, want, if you want to be able to be you know, profitable off of this, you've got to put in the effort yourself. Right. And, so, and also one of the, the problems- As a beginner, I need to sign up to multiple exchanges, right? That, that has to be a standard. Yeah. I mean, if you're willing to do, this is the thing with trading, it's work. Like we need to think of it as a business. This is why I don't trade for a living. Like you need to turn up to work and you need to trade and you need to make it your business. You need to understand it. And if you're not prepared to do that, if you're hoping for a quick fix, you're going to lose all your bankroll, man. Aren't you, con aren't you concerned about like KYC being in the hands of so many people? Uh, if, from a, a general point of view, yes, I'm concerned in general, but the risk taken me really doesn't care. Like, I mean, I'm on Facebook. What they have on me is probably far more dangerous than, <laughs> I don't know. I don't really think about it. I'm like, this is, we, we are pioneering a new space. You know, it's like someone saying there's a bunch of land out there and I'm saying, well, I'm scared to go and grab it. You know, so that's a mentality I take, but I can understand why a lot of people would be. No, and also, you know, now that we're talking about it, you don't like, it doesn't mean that your main holdings need to be KYC too. Like you could, you could separately have a different strategy for how you're like hoarding or hodling Bitcoin. Yeah. It has nothing to do with your KYC the exchange accounts, which is part of this business, right? Which is right. the arbitrage between the markets, which it's not, it's, it's only existing now as an operation as a job because it's the wild west. The yeah. Market. Well, I mean, it exists in the, you know, in the financial markets, the banks are making millions of dollars every day on foreign exchange arbitrage. So yeah. you know, if you think of a triangle you can't with those guys, right? Is that the difference? Is that, is, is it that it's easier to compete in the crypto world? 
Well, it's that, you know, I'm going to use the term shit coins. So it's the shit coins for a trader, especially a retail trader, because size does matter in the markets, believe it or not, it does. But for a retail trader, we have shit coins. And if, if you look at some of the most successful retail traders in the stock market, Stephen Ducks is actually one of them. He presented to MIT. The guy traded penny stocks for a reason. He made millions from penny stocks. And the reason he did that is because he knew most of them were bullshit companies. What he was doing is shorting them whenever they were going up. Because if you know something shit is going up, there's only one direction, knowing that it's a shit coin where it's going to go after. You know, wow. So there's, now, there's a mentality with it. Which, which exchanges let you uh, take advantage of that? So, you know, for full disclosure, we've both worked with Cricks. I'm still working with Cricks. Um, that's not an exchange you would use for shit coins because I know only real like coins, real pairs are on Cricks right now. Right. Where would you go for, for like a, a shitcoin uh, festival of uh, shorting? <laughs> there, there are loads, like loads of exchanges. We track 20 at Crypto Wizards. So we, we actually don't hold the user's information. When people sign up to Crypto Wizards, the only thing they need is an email address. I just send them emails. I don't want their first name. They get enough of that, enough of that shit everywhere. Like we don't, we don't hold any of their API keys for exchanges or anything. So they just get the information. They've then got to go to the exchanges, but there's a number of exchanges. Number one, like uh, HitBTC is one of my favorites over there. Um, there's an exchange we use. I can't mention the name of it uh, here on this because it wouldn't be fair to the paid subscribers, but it's an exchange that deals with smart contracts. So a lot of people watching this will guess to which one that is. And we call that smart contract arbitrage. So this is an exchange that doesn't even work like normal exchanges. Oh, wow. um, yeah, is so when I saw this- Is that a deck? <laughs> You get it, right? I mean, it's straightforward. So a newbie trader doesn't need to give a shit because they're like, oh, okay, so this is different. I get why it works. They just want to get that hit and be profitable. So that's like level one. Then level two is like, for me, it's like triangular arbitrage where you're not dealing with shit coins because there's a lot of risk in shit coins with arbitrage. Like what if that coin takes a day to transfer to the other exchange? You've lost your money. Like you're not going to make that game. Now, how would you know that? Like, I mean, experience, experience. Yeah. Is, is there anything you can look at in the fundamentals of a coin to understand that the, that the transfer is going to take time? Yeah. Yeah, one of the things I recommend to all the traders is when you, before you place any arbitrage trade, so there's a video on the platform that takes them through the steps. One of the key checks is two things. Number one, Google that coin on both exchanges. And the reason for that is you want the name of the coin, not the ticker symbol. Yeah. Because you can have two different coins with the same ticker, and then you're like buying one and wondering why it's not transferring. So that's number one issue. Oh. Yeah. Number two is transfer a small amount of money first, like some neg negligible, stupid amount of money so that you can see the transfer has gone across. So once you know that and you have enough depth, then you can go in with the rest of your depth and finish that. Wow. Trip. So, I mean, it seems like it, now is that static information, the, the time it takes to send between exchanges? Like once I know that, no, right. Does that change over time? <laughs> I mean, uh, let, let me give you an example with Bitcoin. Do you ever remember transferring Bitcoin and it took like two hours for some reason and you couldn't work out why because the network was so clogged up like that can happen. Right. So if you're transferring a token, like let's say it's an Ethereum based, you know, an ERC 20 token or something. And there's, there's a lot of uh, congestion on the network or whatever. You see what I mean? Like, yeah, you can't, you can't expect that it has nothing to do with the exchange. It's just the entire network. Right, which is why we've moved like with the tool now. Um, and so as, as the tool's been growing, so we've been taking no profit from it. All of the, all of the money goes back into buying better and better data because data is really expensive. And so what we do now is we have like, for example, a triangular arbitrage multi-tool. So you select multiple exchanges, which are all good, reputable exchanges. In fact, I'd like to get Cricks on there as well, where those opportunities are like a 5 to 7% arbitrage opportunity but the depth is huge. So for a retail trader, like you could trade that with between one to 10 grand, let's say. Uh, so that percentage actually adds up to be a lot on reputable coins that you know will transfer. And even more interestingly, you can do triangular arbitrage on just one exchange. It's like foreign exchange arbitrage. So there's a tool as well that you can select any one of, it's something like a ridiculous number of exchanges and you can go, 
look at every coin on this exchange right now and tell me, is there a triangle where I can buy here, sell here, buy here and sell back to where I started for a profit on the same exchange? Wow. So it's great for learners, for people that are learning and want to understand arbitrage and that it's really, really useful for them. So, so this is the safest way really for somebody to get in, in, in that your arbitrage is, is reduced risk, right? You're, you're looking at how much it is over here, over there. Um, once you do the, the test of how much time it takes to transfer, you, re you remove that risk. Um, so what knowledge comes in to, to be able to make better decisions? Yeah, it's a really interesting point you made around risk. So, you know, I, I'm a believer that if as a trader, you need to find the animal that suits you. Arbitrage won't be for everyone. Some people will find it very fidgety and their their focus arbitrage requires a lot of focus. Like you need to know I'm putting this in the right part of the order book. You need to know what you're doing. Like I don't want to give the impression like like there's no risk. It is reduced risk in terms of speculation. Because yeah. I don't give a shit which way the prices go right. with arbitrage. Like, I just want to get back to where I started. Now, yeah. is, is, there, is there a bot? Like, it, it, do you use bots for this strategy? Is there a way to use a bot to um, yeah. remove some of that difficulty? Yeah, actually, it's, it's really interesting. There's two bots that I'm focused on right now, personally. Um, and the interesting thing for me is I'm much more interested in growing a business for traders in crypto than I am trading because I love programming and I love trading and I love finance and I love doing videos. So for me, this is less fun. Yeah. Um, so I've got a couple, couple things I'm working on. The first thing is co-integration arbitrage. So this is a new type of arbitrage for a lot of people. They've never heard of it. But let's say that you and I each represent a coin. So you're Ethereum Classic and I'm... Uh, some kind of ERC20 token or something. And my price is like tied to you. So if you move up, I'm moving up a bit. And if you move yeah. down, I'm moving. Well, it turns out there's a mathematically statistical calculation that says how well tied together we are. And so on the platform, we actually show people these opportunities where this price has jumped up and this price has not yet jumped up. Therefore, you can short this one, making money if it goes down. And you can go along this one, making money if it goes up. In other words, you're trading the spread. So that's number one is building a bot that will now do that automatically. So we've got the platform to give people the opportunities to say, bingo, you know, here's where something's deviated. Um, but really, the next step is automating that. And I haven't figured out because what I want to do is I don't want to serve one or two traders. I want to serve the, the retail community. I'm interested in the single dad like me or the whoever at home who wants to make extra money and, and, and is just interested. That's the person I want to serve. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, do I make that into some kind of tutorial on how they can build their own bot? But then again, once they have a bot going on an exchange and it's working, what's the point in someone else doing it? So I, I'm actually stuck with this dilemma of how do I help people become more profitable? And that's what I'm constantly working on. How do I make sure that everyone can benefit and it's, it's kind of fair for all, if that makes sense. No, I, I, I like that idea. At the same time, I wonder, you know, do you think that this also, how do you feel that this helps with adoption in general? Do you, do you think that it's, it's just the more people that are involved in crypto equals, you know, a net positive for the, the space? Or, or do you think a lot of people who are, who are learning how to do this don't even care about crypto? They're just, you know, trying to make money. I mean, it's interesting because, and I'm, I'm guilty of this myself. I came into crypto because I heard stocks and I've always been interested in the financial markets. I traded a lot. I, tr I started trading when I was 17 years old, you know, uh, so I learned about blockchain and crypto. Then I got interested in the technology. Right. So I actually not people, only think, yeah, yeah I, I think it's, it's critical that we are providing an avenue for people to gain value now today. And if that avenue is making money because you're trading this, I, I don't understand what's wrong with that. Like for no, me, it's fantastic. You're, you're right. And, uh, and the, the, one of the benefits, again, is that it's a 24-7 market. Um, and uh, there's, it's still a Wild West opportunity. So there's still ways for people to make money. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And automatically, because they're involved, they're learning more about everything. So... Right. You know, do you think that today the, the, the next step to get people further in is to, to introduce these tools for them to, to trade? 
is like where where are you focused on helping beginners coming into the space yeah my focus right now one of the things i love doing is teaching um so my focus right now is hunting down here in the uk where i'm based where are the talks happening where i can present what works and what doesn't work not just from arbitrage you know we also have leading metrics as well like uh one of the an example is exchange flow balance i did a recent video on it exchange where, flow yeah. balance yeah you're gonna love this do you want me to tell you now if yes. anyone watching this is going to benefit from this right yes, now yes. so so one of the things we've noticed um so there's a company called sentiment and i've been buying up their data so that i can provide it cost effectively as well to, to our audience and i've been working with sentiment to do that and i was going through like i had to nitpick like what what are the metrics and data i can get here turn into information that people can actually use and trade that doesn't mean they need to do arbitrage you know i was looking for something non arbitrage based one of the metrics and there's a number of them but the one i particularly love you can tell i love this is exchange flow balance which means it's a representation of how many tokens have been moved in or out of exchange wallets and if you see like a massive spike like a, a like an uptick usually i'm looking for the uptick if you want to go long on a coin right and i've got some examples in fact i could probably bring them up and show you but um i i was tracking this and i was like do i bring this to the community let me track it so i tracked some and then i was like holy shit <laughs> like this actually works this is a leading metric so you see this pump up yeah. on exchange flow balance and then very often more often than not, what i noticed is that you see a massive pump up in price with the coin and some examples of this right now I'll give you our self key has just recently pumped up so it's on my watch list one that happened and I ironically did a video using this coin and then it pumped up straight after I did the video was seal coin s e e l e like so these are the sort of things I want to bring to uh just to these like networking events but not because I want to promote a platform I I I just want to share information. That. Yeah, like yeah, share look information. At, look at the information I'm getting from Santiment is the name right. of the company. Yeah, Santiment. Yeah. So Santiment is 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 gathering the movement of tokens around these exchanges. This is one of the things they're gathering that you're pay, purchasing. Right. Now, in the example of Seal, Exchange X all of a sudden has an increase of tokens that they're holding in their wallets. Right. That's a signal for it the the price of Seal to pump uh, exchange wide like uh, market wide or specifically on this exchange where would you purchase the seal uh specifically on that exchange like i would look at that exchange because well i mean if that if that price is on multiple exchanges so it's a coin on multiple exchanges by very nature of arbitrage because what will happen is let's say it pumps on that exchange what do you think is going to happen on this exchange someone's going right. to buy that opportunity transfer it and sell it anyway yeah you know, so arbitrage is again a natural way of the market correcting so it wouldn't really matter but how would you play it out like would you play it out on the exchange that purchased the seal yeah i would want to so if it's moving into an exchange wallet you got to ask why is somebody like let's say this coin's been a bit dead like here's here's exactly what i look for by the way so if i see volume is like slightly moving it's like a little curve it's like something's creeping in Okay, so you know someone knows something, something's creeping in, and you see this pump on this leading metric, like boom. And I don't just mean like a little spike; I mean like a, it's literally like that, right? So you see the spike on the chart, then you know somebody's moved all these tokens to the exchange. Why? Like, is there a pump coming? Like, so the the truth is you don't know. You can do research, and and again, the tool we have lets you go into like traders forums and see what traders are saying about that coin, etc. Like on the platform. So we try to make it easy for people to do the research, but you don't know a hundred percent. But let me ask you the question: If you are buying a bunch of tokens each month and balancing a portfolio, do you want to buy the ones that are showing the most sign that something's going to move? in other words you put your stop loss very tight knowing that your potential gain is huge so your risk to reward is great right. or do you want to buy coins that a bunch of guys on youtube keep saying are going to pump right no of course you want to see where the i mean you want to have data 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 backed and the fact that this isn't this isn't easily accessible data like right. you're paying for this yeah yeah i mean if a user wants to get this data themselves it's going to cost them 
you know, and it depends how they use sentiment. Sentiment's a great tool, and I would love to promote them here doing this because I actually really believe in what they're doing, and I've worked with them. I, I, I'm going to check it out, man, because it sounds yeah. like, I mean, are they doing something similar to, like, chain analysis and that they're, like, looking at movements on chain? It's all on chain. So oh. all the metrics here, we're looking at on chain metrics, financial metrics, even developer metrics. So if you, I saw in one of the trading groups, because I saw Ripple's price do this, it's just like bombed. And one of the trading groups was like, uh, some of the traders were like, are they even developing on Ripple anymore? So I ran the metric on the tool, which we're buying from Sentiment. It looks like GitHub commits or something. Exactly. And it, and it will show you on the chart how many GitHub commits, et cetera, are there. So I know, yeah, they're doing development. In fact, Ripple has had a massive amount of Git, GitHub uh, commits recently. So then, then you can look at financial metrics as well, like MVRV. Uh, like we could talk all day on these, but these will tell you based on the cost of acquiring the coin, et cetera, is the coin valued less than the general cost of acquiring a coin in a sense? So it's a, a financial metric. So you know whether or not this coin is likely under or overvalued as well. So there's like a hedge fund manager's way of looking at it. So what we're doing at Crypto Wizards is essentially buying this, this data, turning it into information. So what we've done that is like with exchange flow balance, we have an algorithm running every day going through all of the coins. And it's got a pretty clever bit of maths in it that just looks at, is there a pop, up or down? Because if it's down, it can also mean that that it's price is going to go yeah. down. Right. Yeah. So up or down, and it will literally do that for you instead of someone having to manually go through a thousand coins to find the ones that nice. are there. So that's how we work with sentiment. We turn the data into information. Uh, and, and in that sense, it is a bit like s signals, but I'm pretty excited about that and I want to present it to people. Yeah, well, I, you know, definitely, I think after this, uh, you know, a lot of people will, uh, everybody should be checking out Crypto Wizards. I know that uh, it's very cost effective too. I mean, you're giving all of this for like less than uh, 200 bucks, right? Uh, yeah, it's a lot less. I mean, we, I, I said to some guys I was working with around it, around the pricing, I needed to future proof the pricing so that I didn't have to increase prices because that just pisses people off. But I also needed to price it enough so I could get enough capital to buy more data. I don't think people realize like how expensive data is. So for example, you mentioned algorithmic trading. Now, one of the things, I've, I've got a, a cousin, I'm going to interview him on the channel, but, you know, he's, he's worked with an HFT. And one of the things I can tell you about HFTs is they, they do look at order book imbalance. So we've been tracking for five coins. I could tell you what they are, but for five coins, since for like a year now, we've been tracking every hour, what does a snapshot of the entire order book look like? Now, I went to look for that data before I started tracking it. Yeah. And it was like anywhere between 500 euros to 20,000 euros, depending on what coin and, and what history I wanted for one data feed, like it's crazy. So this data that we're tracking for machine learning and algo trading purposes, et cetera, on crypto is it's just included. We're just tracking it and we just give it to the community as like part of the value. So we're trying to, we're trying to make it like, we're trying to help the person who's like me, like the retail guy, who's interested in this stuff and he doesn't want to like pay an arm over here, a leg over there. It's just like, no, you can be profitable just here. Like just turn up here and make money. Now I'm getting the flow, right? So sentiment's doing the work to get all the data. You're doing the work to interpret it in a way that's much more easy for, for me to digest. Right now. What's, you know, where, where am I adding my specific uh, skill set to, to make, you know, to make me more competitive versus someone else? You know, obviously, I've, I've made the right decision of, of absorbing your interpretation. Um, but what else can I do to, to give me that edge? Yeah, I'll answer that. Uh, the first thing I want to clear up is sentiment also do provide analytics to in charts. So they can also give that. Um, it's going to cost more because with crypto wizards, you get like 100 calls a day. Uh, with sentiment, you'd have like an unlimited amount of calls, but that's the retail the, trade it. And it, yeah. I mean, that's just like, like mining, right? Like if you're, if you're a miner and you've got a connection to energy, you're making more money than somebody who's, you know, mm -hmm. part of a pool. It, yeah. it, you know, it depends where your skill set is. My skill set yeah. on the, the ability to use all of that information, right? So the yeah. fact that you're absorbing from all of that, you're saying, look, this is what matters to us from our trading uh, perspective. You know, we're looking at the exchange flow imbalance. Mm -hmm. I love that. 
I love that, yeah. man. That makes so much sense. I mean, yeah. I, and, and I, I feel like that's just like one data point out of a hundred. Just right? one, bro. Yeah. But it's one of my favorite, I'll be honest. No, yeah. I love that one. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But we're combining Santiment's data with, like, I have a lot of data providers and some of them are a lot more expensive than Santiment. So, you know, like, so we're combining all of that. So to answer your question, like around getting an edge, which I love that you asked that because it is about if you have no edge in trading you have nothing don't bother like don't hey, you're show just up. gambling at that point. so so i think that was a really good question yeah you're, you're gambling just, at that you 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 yeah you you're on hope you're you're try, and i've been there and you know it's funny because a lot of people start off paper trading and when i when i like started trading i was i went through the same schooling everyone else did bear in mind that you know 90% of the time retail traders are losing money so we're we're learning from mainly from people that we think are making money who are probably losing money. Right. right. So, so then you start learning from interviews from actual traders. And there was this one guy who worked at a prop firm and he, he had a cool website. This is back in the day called no bullshit trading. And okay. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Cause it was just straight to the bone. Like if you don't have an edge, don't turn up like size matters. Don't bullshit yourself. Like, and then I, I just got so absorbed. That's when I really started learning trading was from from this kind of guy so, so going back to this like what's the edge that i can apply after i've got your information is it do i need to start getting better at identifying charts is it a particular tool set that i should be using do i need to learn how to make my own bot what's that next you know after okay we've identified that these sources of information going through this filter now mm -hmm. what are those tools i need for the execution like you know, I'm, I'm obviously, and again, I, I work with Crick, so, you know, I, I want to put that out there, but I'm always thinking about how am I using, how am I going to be con using these tools where I can just set this pipeline up and set it and forget it. Right. Right. Like, I don't have to do anything. Right. So one of the areas, so for example, let's say you, you fit in one or two buckets, you've got capital and you're willing to hire a programmer or you are a programmer yourself. Like you like coding. Yeah. If you're that person, because again, to answer your question, depends on what animal you are. Right. But if you're that animal, then I would highly recommend finding an exchange that you can see, and, and our tool will show you this, but you can find out yourself, which exchange is more often than not showing triangular arbitrage opportunities. So I'm gonna give it like a direct example for you right now that someone, they can go and do this and they will go and make money. So a triangular arbitrage opportunities, meaning on that one exchange that, I can buy, sell, buy, sell on the same exchange without transferring any coins, avoiding a lot of fees as well, by the way. Right. And then go and build the algorithm on that exchange, but don't build it just using like, um, uh, this is going to get a little bit technical, but I'm go just going to mention it. Go for the it. Word. Go for yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> don't build it using just like a REST API or a web socket alone. Like build it with something called a fix protocol. And a fixed protocol is, is what the financial institutions use. It's a much faster way of sending information, meaning that if someone's competing on the same exchange with a bot, you're going to beat them. Speed, speed is a weapon. Yeah. So if you host that bot on the same service or, or co-located servers, um, which by the way, ties in with Crix, uh, we can always cover that as well. But if you host like that bot on servers that are also distantly close, with a fixed protocol, your bot, depending on the, the thresholds you build in, will automatically execute those trades faster than the competition as well. So not only will you be able to sleep at night, but you'll be able to make X amount of money per day, depending on whatever the market gives you, without caring whether the market goes up or down. Like you could say, I want this bot only to trade if the, the opportunity starts with US dollar tether. So if you just want to hold US dollar tether with which depending on your views on tether, right? Like my, may or may not be a good idea, but if that's what you want to do, you could design your bot that Most way. Most of the time it's a good idea. And there's, and, and whenever it falls down to like 70, you know, like 70 cents on the dollar, that's the best time to buy it. Cause it always magically pumps back right up to one. Yeah. I think the whole tether thing, like a lot of the opportunities I've seen in running data is, is against tether ironically. For sure. So I mean, it's really it's pegged, interesting. A lot of these artificially pegged things are, are, are the best opportunities because uh, gravity is pulling it uh, in a certain direction. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. So the triangle, 
Does this mm. exist in equities? Um, not so much in equities. It depends. More like, like more on like foreign exchange. Yeah, it's more like foreign exchange where you have a pair of something like dollar to the pound, or like for example, let's say the way I teach arbitrage on the channel is let's say we have three stores. And one store is willing to exchange a Coca-Cola for a dollar. So you give them a dollar, you get a Coke. You yeah. go to another store, they say, oh, cool. If you give us a Coke, we'll give you a Pepsi. And so you exchange the Coke for a Pepsi. And then at another store, they're like, oh, awesome. You've got Pepsi. We need that. We'll give you $2 for a Pepsi. So they give you two bucks. So you started with one it's buck, you ended up with half. two. So you need something with, but, but that's not to say you can't do arbitrage with equities. You can. Yeah. Like, like co-integration arbitrage, pairs trading, like there's all sorts of arbitrage you can but do. It, this. It, the, does the risk increase at that point or the complexity increases? Uh, the complexity increase. I mean, in equities, there's a lot of platforms, et cetera, that will show this stuff for you. Like it will give you the answers. So you can go and trade it, but you pay. <laughs> it's not for the retail trader. Like if, if I was a retail trader trading equities, I would take the Stephen Ducks approach. I would find bullshit companies that I know... I don't even know where the freaking owner lives, right? <laughs> right, just sure. And, yeah, and this, 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 this stock of this company is like, and, and you can see on trading, it's like single moms at home. This sounds cutthroat, but this is how it is. You know, these, these people are all being bullshitted into this coin. You know that coin's gonna go, that, that stock's gonna go one way. So you short the coin. But th there's, a, there's a whole process in that as well, making it sound easy, but there's a lot of shit you need to know to do that. So, I mean, I, I've learned a lot on this one. Like one is that if you're going, the easiest approach is to go the Stephen Duck's approach, which is just short the shit, right? Because you know that gravity is going to pull it down. You know that this isn't real. You don't know where the people live. You can see something is shit from a mile away. Um, and I guess there you just need to have a bit of a stomach in case it's, it continues to pump because inevitably, you know, it's going to go down. If you don't have some kind of stop in place, some kind of, if I'm wrong, like you can lose everything because your loss is unlimited if you're shorting. If you're buying, your loss is limited because it can only go to zero, right? So, so I say short, but like be careful. I, and I don't actually recommend that maybe for someone who's just started trading, like make sure like you've bought some coins, you understand stop losses and stuff. If you don't understand that, do not touch shorting. Don't touch it. No, it sounds like if I were gonna start this today, to go into the triangular uh, arbitrage makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You only need one exchange for that. Yeah. Everything is apparent. You can see it. Um, yeah. Now, crypto coding. wizards uh, mm. can signal that to me, right? I can use crypto wizards to see the triangular arbitration yeah. um, opportunities. Okay, dude, we got to do that together on the video. I would love to like watch yeah, cool, that man. on the screen uh, because that just sounds like, you know, money waiting to be picked up. Yeah. Uh, it was actually one of the wizards. We call each other wizards now. So like when people email me, I'm like, hey, wizard, hey, wizard. But uh, one of the wizards who actually said, oh, I'm on your triangular tool. It'd be much better if it could do this. So this, this dude actually helped me like figure out what exchanges and build a better tool. So it was actually the community, ironically, that came up with that tool, which is pretty cool. That's awesome, man. That is, that is amazing. That like, and you need that feedback. That's what's, what's cool, right? That we've got these YouTube channels. We've got the Twitter. We've got ways to, for people to talk back. I know that you're always absorbing information from your community. Nonstop, you talk about how important your community is to, to, to what you do with Crypto Wizard. So props that you're constantly identifying that, dude. Cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, no, they're everything. I mean, like, I don't get the buzz from sitting in front of a screen trading. I get it from building shit the community likes. That's where I get my where I need more of this. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'll go underground for like eight weeks. It happened recently where I just needed to go in the zone. I did no videos, but I don't want to put out bullshit videos just because I want to keep up. You know what I mean? Like I wanted them to have value. Like it's important because otherwise, what am I doing? What I'm doing is shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, totally, man. And yeah. now I, I, we didn't touch on this much on the algorithmic side. You know, what are you using? You know, I know that, so, you know, you and I became acquainted through Kryzen. Kryzen yeah. was the algorithmic trading bots that now got acquired by Crix. Yeah. You know, again, full disclosure, I'm working with Crix. But yeah. what else, like, you know, what, what intrigues you there? What are you doing there? Do you have any bots running right now? I've got no bots at the moment. So my next phase is going into bot development. So I'm way behind in terms of building that only because I wasn't sure if I have a bot, how do I share it? You know, so, so I'm still solving that problem. But for algorithmic trading, 
like in my experience and people have asked on the channel, what about this platform? What about this platform? Cricks is, and you know, full disclosure as well, I also work with Cricks, right? So, but it's the best because Kryzen was built, um, there's a website called Quantopian, which is like the Kryzen of the stock market. Right. And so Quantopian was built using this backend framework called Zipline. And then Zipline was essentially um, turned into Enigma Catalyst for crypto, which was really hard to get into. Like I was trying to figure it out, but Kryzen were the like first people to do that very successfully. And so they've built that obviously into the Crix uh, platform as well. And the reason why that's so powerful and why I'd highly, I would highly recommend it to people, why I took interest in it, is this is like a Python framework where you can also then add in like machine learning elements, uh, statistical calculations. Like it's easy for someone who doesn't even know programming and algo to learn. Like the video, you know, I know Shivro did, I know I did some as well. Like you can literally follow those. And when you read the comments, people Shout are like, out Thank to you. Shivro, Bizwa. Shivro. Right hey, Shivro. <laughs> Shivro is such a cool guy, man. So he was. Um, you know, he, he's done a great job in outlining that. So people literally are like writing in and saying, thank you. I couldn't understand this before. This is the, now I can actually understand how to do this. So I, I would recommend it to those people, but like, you know, what market you pointed it out, like what market are we in up, down, sideways, and then build the bot for that. So switch your bot, you know, depending on what market you're in. And so right. your success will be dependent on how well you can pick markets not how clever is your now how important do you think back testing these strategies is critical like if you're doing algo trading don't play without back testing uh in fact in the market wizards one of the uh one of the successful traders who made millions by the way back testing in foreign exchange which is extraordinarily difficult in terms of making a successful tool that does that going forward as well but they did this and you, you listen to them and all they do is they like back test, back test, back test, back test, back test. Like, and for me as the programmer, that's actually like the fun part. That's the bit I actually enjoy. Right. Where you guess and then it's like, let me see what happens. <laughs> let me oh, see shit, what happens. I just, I just, uh, shit, I would have lost 80% of my money. Okay, let's go yeah. back to the beginning. Oh, here I would have made a shitload. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, sometimes the overfitting is, is very interesting as well. Right. Where you yeah. can just continuously tweak it until it makes that part of history look perfect. Yeah. I'm going to cut some videos on this too. I mean, you know, TensorFlow, which is also a framework for building Python, like machine learning, et cetera, or JavaScript stuff. Um, it's essentially developed by Google, I think, but you can look at what's called the validation accuracy as well. So if you have overfitting, it'll show in one graph, but it'll also show in the other graph that in the real world, this doesn't work. So it's actually looking at <laughs> non-analyzed data yet. And it, and it applies it to that and tells you you've overfit your data. So nice. there's loads That's of ways fair. to do this. That's a good way to do it. So it keeps some data outside of your model just to be able to tell you, look, dude, you're, you're, you're outside yeah. of the realm of reality. Yeah, I mean, there was this, so there's a neural network. I don't know how much you know about neural nets, um, but some of your audience for sure will. And there's a neural network called LSTM. It stands for long short term memory. So it means it can run. It's like a human brain that learns over and over and over. It's, it's freaking cool. But what you'll see like on YouTube, when you watch the guys who have developed these stock predicting like LSTMs is their data is way overfit. Like they seeing oh, look at the price trend, it's going up. And the LSTM did exactly this. Now buy my Udemy course and I'll show you how to predict the stock market. Like don't fall for the shit, man. Like it's, yeah. you, you're so right with overfitting. It's all over the place. So, okay. I, I feel like uh, I learned a lot on this one. And then oh, I, I, I need to figure out exactly what my next steps are to, to start trading. It sounds like the first one I need to do is sign up to Crypto Wizards. <laughs> Because, That's very um, kind of you, yeah. No, I mean, it, 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 like, the information is the only edge I'm going to get. And then after I fully understand how to identify these, uh, these opportunities, it then comes into that place where me as an animal, I like to automate as much as I can and remove the risk. So figuring out a bot that also can put in those, you know, can, can respect my shorts and my, my stops. That way I'm not dead all of a sudden can can find the triangular uh, arbitrage opportunities 
um, absorb some of the exchange flow information. The exchange flow imbalance for me, dude, I think that's gold. Yeah, exchange I'm, flow I'm, balance. You're nice. going to love that. In fact, I'd say if you want to start anywhere and just buy some coins you think might go up, I would actually just start there because like, you know what I mean? Like that coin's already low. It's already just bobbing along. You buy yeah. into it a little bit. But then if it pops, if you get like nine of them wrong and one of them pops. That's all you need. You've already made like a shit ton of profit from, from that, you know. Now, is there any value in having conviction already on certain coins? Like I, I in me, I've all, you know, there's like maybe like five, ten coins I like. Yeah. Is there any value in, in already having some fundamental understanding or you need to ignore that? Like, even though I know that like Grin and Beam are legit projects, mm. should I ignore that I know that and just trade based on the chart and the arbitrage opportunities? Or is there a way for me to incorporate this information? Yeah, you know, I used to work at a building society, which is like a bank um, selling investment products to people. And one of the ways, so whenever I got a question like this, I would always answer it like this. It depends on your attitude to risk. So, you know, if you, if you look at your investment portfolio, like a pyramid, do I want the fat chunk in trading or do I want it in holding things I already believe in it? I can't answer that for you, unfortunately, but I would say, you know, if you believe in a project and you know that there's end value in the project, I think with a lot of these, they're great but they don't have the network substance behind it or they don't have the, you know, you, you'll know, you'll know how to spot a good, I, I, I would listen to you in fact, in terms of which, which coins to buy. I'm, I'm on the wrong side of the table for this one, but, <laughs> but like I would, if you really know your, your stuff there, then maybe that needs to be the fat chunk. That's the buy and hold though, right? That's not, yeah. there's no, your there's no way to, to take advantage of a, of a, of a bot or an arbitrage in pairing it with information around fundamentals. Fundamentals is a buy and hold strategy, charting, yes. arbitrage, using these, these awesome fucking tools. That's yeah. how you make money from, from trading. So one right. is the buy and hold because I know it, because I deep in my bones, I understand the fundamentals. And on the other side, it's being fast on acting on information today. It, it yeah. seems a lot like mining. You know, um, I was interviewing, um, Gleb from uh, two, bro uh, two, br uh, two brothers miners, um, two guys, two brothers. I think it's two brothers and cool. um, two guys. Anyway, <laughs> so, two miners. Actually, it's just called two miners. Why, am I, why do I need to make them brothers? So two <laughs> miners, right? Awesome fucking pool. They, if you, you got to check out their, their dashboard. Like it's just beautiful to see like hash rate over time for like different coins. Anyway. What he was explaining to me is that no miner is mining with the thought of, oh, I believe in this project. Right. Every miner is doing it for today's profitability. This is how much energy costs me. This is how much I can sell it here. Yes. It'd be very interesting to see if you took, dude, super Megatron style is to be a miner and a trader. Because right. then, you're, then you're taking the energy cost. That's ultimately what you're arbitraging there, right? Right. And then you're taking it along with all these markets. So it's like, okay, I'm mining it. And yeah. then I'm going to sell it over here and then trade it for this and then buy more energy and then mine this one. You can have a very complex spider's web uh, of uh, making yeah. cash like this. Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, arbitrage for me is, it doesn't matter whether it's trading, even business. Like when I'm doing sales for a business, let's say I'm taking on a new client or whatever. For me, that's like just arbitrage in itself. Like arbitrage is... Did you ever, you know, ever get into mining or staking? I haven't yet, but I have been looking at mining from a trader's perspective. Like I'm starting to think, uh, I like to think a little bit outside of that box. Like what are miners not doing that traders can do and or vice versa? Like is there, so I'm starting to explore that avenue, not to the, de the degree I could give any value here. So I won't bother yeah. going into it. But one of the things miners can do and investors can do as well. Let's say going back to your portfolio example is you can buy insurance for some of your coins. So for example, very few people know about options. Like I said, actually at the start of this interview we're doing, the first question I asked my friend was, can I buy options in Bitcoin? Because that's like buying insurance. If the price goes down or up, depending on what option you buy, you only lose a fixed amount of money, which is the premium, what you paid for that option. Yeah. But if it goes in the direction you want, you make an unlimited gain. So if you're a miner, you can actually protect yourself 
from the price fluctuations of Bitcoin, et cetera, as well. Yeah, and, and all this does is it changes your risk reward uh, scenario, yeah. right? You're, you're yeah. decreasing your reward a bit to decrease your risk a bit. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I studied financial markets, trading and analysis uh, at the London School of Business and Finance when I was a younger guy. And um, there was this, this guy, he worked at Barclays. I can't remember his name. I think it was like Dr. Jenkins or something, but he was this cool guy. And he was talking about hedging. And one of the things he mentioned is, unless you have a product like a miner that you're hedging or whatever, like these floor traders and that people that are hedging, he just doesn't get it because it's like saying, well, what if I'm a bit wrong? Let me keep paying some money if I'm a little bit wrong. And then you end up back at zero. It's like, why the hell are you in the game to begin with? You think about it logically. Like right. What you said makes sense, right? It's like, why do that? Yeah, it, it, everybody, you know, kind of needs to zoom out. Remember, it's a risk reward slider. Every single move you're doing, it has a certain, and you just need to be clever about it, right? Like right. whenever I'm telling people about buying Bitcoin, your risk reward is so tilted towards reward, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like even if you buy a hundred bucks of Bitcoin today, it's worth it. Like the, the upside is so much higher than this, you know, the, than losing the $100. There's no lottery yeah. ticket that can even compare. Well, on the um, Ethereum side as well, like I've been doing some analysis comparing the value of, the value of Bitcoin to, to Ethereum. And I'm like, I'm like beyond a shadow of a doubt, Ethereum is undervalued right now. Like the, you know, like the markets reflect people's beliefs. People's beliefs usually wrong, <laughs> you know? So, right. so right now I'm like looking at the Ethereum side as well. And I'm like, I need to buy more Ethereum, you know? So this right. is- so, so you're, you're, on the, you're on the side of the uh, Ethereum Bitcoin trade. That's the pair you're, you're liking right now. That's- Yeah, I, I'm, well, not to say that Bitcoin, I'm like the Ethereum dollar trade. Like I'm not saying Bitcoin won't go up, but Bitcoin is, there's something I did, I did a video on a long time ago now called Zipf's law. It's very much like Metcalf's law. It's a way of valuing a network uh, based on the size of that network, but it's like a hedged version. It's like, take, it takes like a margin of safety and says, well, what if I'm like half wrong? And it turns out like if I'm half wrong, Ethereum is still way undervalued. Bitcoin is like on, it's like on the mark when you look at things like M, um, MVRV, which are like these financial valuation. It's like on the mark, it's there or thereabouts, but Ethereum to the dollar is not. So I'm not saying like trade Ethereum to Bitcoin because Bitcoin can still go up as well. Yeah. I'm just like Ethereum to the dollar is kind of interesting to me right now. Interesting, man. Dude, I feel like we could go on forever. <laughs> we definitely, you know what? I, I, we owe it to, to explore this idea of integrating mining and staking along mm -hmm. with what you're doing. Because I feel like the more you zoom out and you consume all of, like, all of the math, because that's what it is at the end of the day, right? It's, it's math. And uh, you know, the closer you get to, to all those different points, so like right now you're buying the coins on the exchanges. Well, what if you're, if you're right at the beginning where you're converting energy into the coin and then you're doing the arbitrage, I feel like that's another way to get even more profit. And like as much as possible, I want to get so deep into this for everybody. Like, mm -hmm. I think that that's, that's really the, the golden ticket is when you, when you're also part of the production part, part of the nodes, part of the, part of the actual crypto ecosystem. Right. Even though I got into this just the same way as you, it's like, first I made some money. It's like, eh, let me learn about the technology now. You know? <laughs> um, that's, uh, that's something we got to do for another episode. So uh, brother, I, I thank you for your time, man. And like uh, massive shout outs to, to Santiment as well. I, I'm going to recommend everybody to see Santiment, obviously crypto wizards, obviously cricks. Uh, we also gave a shout out to our brother Shugro. Uh, we miss <laughs> We need to get you back into uh, trading one day. Um, yeah, man, we got to do this again soon. Yeah, definitely. Thanks again uh, for having me on. It's such a, uh, such an honor to be here. I really was looking forward to this. So it's been such a great experience. Thank you so much. Thank you, dude.